Hey everybody, I wanted to give you a quick overview of chapter 3 in Douglas Kelly's book, Creation and Change. Chapter 3 is called An Absolute Beginning. Uh, in this chapter, Douglas Kelly is addressing the topic of creation ex nihilo. Ex nihilo means from nothing. Um, so we know in Genesis 1.1 it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And in verse 3, it says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. So here we have God speaking. God speaking powerful words. God speaking words and things happening. There's no, there's no creation through pre-existing materials. Some of the creation myths... Um, of, of other cultures had a creation where existing materials, existing matter um, is, is what was used to create the, the, the universe or the world. And Genesis 1.1, Douglas Kelly argues, teaches creation ex nihilo. Um, now in the chapter, he, he's going to compare and contrast two different kinds of creation both of which are in the Genesis account, and God used both of them. The first is absolute creation, which I just mentioned, and then relative creation. So relative creation is the creation of something pre, uh, a pre-existing, taking something that already exists and forming something. And we know that God does this in Genesis 2, verse 7. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed, into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. So here we have God taking something that already existed, which was the dust of the ground, and forming the man. God is still involved there. Um, it, it's still him doing the creating. It's still him doing directly. It's special creation, but it's relative creation. Um, it's not an absolute creation like we see in Genesis 1, 1 through 3, where he s speaks and and the universe comes into existence, right? And he says, let there be light, and there is light. And so um, <clears throat> those are the main thing that Douglas Kelly is, is talking about in chapter 3. And I wrote down a quote I wanted to share with you guys. Um, and this is what it says. According to the plain meaning of Genesis 1-1 in the original Hebrew... The infinite personal God at a particular chosen point in eternity created all reality outside himself out of nothing that existed previously. So there you have it. Creation ex nihilo. Um, God created nothing existed before that except God. God created the heavens and the earth and he did not use anything pre-existing. He didn't. Um, he doesn't rely on, on pre-existing materials. When you and I create something, say you create a poem, say you create a desk, maybe you're good with woodworking and you make a desk or you make a shelf or you make something um, using the creativity that God gave you, that is, that is relative creation. That is not absolute creation. So you're, you're using the creativity that God gave you to make something, but you're not speaking something into existence. This is a power that God alone has. We don't have this power um, to, to if, I say, if I say chair, a chair does not appear in front of me. I don't have that much power, um, but God does, and... God even has the power to create light in our souls. And this is what happens at, at conversion. This is what happens in regeneration. When the Spirit of God regenerates us and, and for the first time we're alive and we can respond to the gospel. And so God is the God who speaks things that aren't into existence. And this is an awesome thing to, to meditate on. This is an awesome truth that tells us how powerful our God is, that he could create things that were not there. And he didn't have to wait for a long process. And that's kind of the point here, is that 
the the community, the scientific community is relying on these millions and millions of years because they need that amount of time. But actually, that's not even enough time to get the complexity, to get the design. Um, my son, Tobiah, and I are studying every Friday. We, we have a science unit that we're studying and we're studying about our, our moon and the fact that our moon is created. And our moon is is orbiting the earth and all the precise measurements that where that moon has to be. And and, and we, we studied the, the phases of the moon and how God said that the, the moon would, would be to light the night, but also to provide uh, a marker for times and seasons. And, and it's amazing. Our month comes from the moon, the word moon, month. And so God put in the heavens, he put these cycles, he put these, um, everything screams, I'm designed. Everything screams, glory to God. Everything, we look around our universe, we look up in the heavens, the heavens are declaring the glory of God. Just like it says in Psalm, uh, I believe it's 19, Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. And so um, he then relates this, Douglas Kelly relates this to the laws of thermodynamics and to the complexities of biological functions. So he's taking a theological, a biblical concept, which is creation ex nihilo, and he's relating it to something that we find in science, which is the, the laws of thermodynamics and to uh, biological complexity. And the way that he does that is really uh, amazing, and it's awe-inspiring, to be honest with you. It's, um, it should cause us to worship. Like it should cause us to be amazed at our God and the complexity of the world around us. Um, the fact that we can even study the universe, that we're in a position that's actually um, that's actually conducive for doing study, for for examining the universe and seeing we're we're in a good spot. We're not just in a good spot. We're in the perfect spot to to see what we see in the universe and to be where we're at. Our earth is a great home, even after it has fallen, even after humanity has plunged our, not only ourselves, but the creation into a decay. God still sustains it. God through Jesus. We see, we see in the new Testament that Jesus in John one, 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 uh, John one, one through 14, he was actually, there at the creation. Father, Son, and Spirit were all involved in the creation process. So all of this is not just to get head knowledge. All of this is not just to argue with, with those who do not believe in creation, who do not believe in the Creator, God who made the heavens and the earth. This is... It would, it would be wrong if all we did with this knowledge was got smarter or, or got to, or became more able to argue for creation over evolution. The point of creation is to worship the creator. The point of studying a book like Douglas Kelly's Creation and Change is to be able to see how scripture and science actually come together and, and then use that as an apologetic for the gospel. Because the point of all this is that the creator God came and, and took on human flesh and the person of the son took on human flesh to live a perfect life, to die for our sins, the sins of all the whole world, and then to rise again. And the awesome thing is this cursed creation is groaning and someday there's going to be a new creation and, and so God is going to, and the new creation is going to be not just another Eden, but it's actually going to be better than Eden ever was. And that's hard to imagine for us because we, when we look back and we think about Eden, we think that this was like, it couldn't have gotten any better, right? Adam and Eve were in the garden, but Adam and Eve were put to the test. They, they had... There in the garden, they had before them life and death. It's just like when God told the Israelites, I set before you life and death. Before Adam and Eve 
there was life and death. Life being the tree of life and death being the tree of the knowledge of, the good, of good and evil. And, and so this whole narrative of scripture goes from creation to fall in Genesis 3 and then the promise of Christ in Genesis 3.15. And then we have the whole history of, Ab of Noah, Abraham, Israel, Moses, all that stuff leading up to, to when Jesus came. And then we have the future when Jesus comes again and, and there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. So all of this is for worship. All of this is to apply what we learn to meditate on God and who he is and how powerful he is. And, and to show our, our friends and family, wow, look at this. Look at this. Look how God has designed this. Look at, look at how intricately designed the universe is whether at the biological level or in physics, right? The the second the first and second laws of thermodynamics. It's just it's an amazing amazing thing to read these things. And Douglas Kelly's taking us through Genesis to show us that the the natural way to read this text is the correct way. That we don't have to come up with some elaborate um some elaborate system to try to figure out what all this means. God meant to God meant to show us clearly what he did. Now we don't understand it fully. It's amazing. It's amazing to think that God created the universe out of nothing. Um, it's amazing that he did it in six days. It's amazing that even back then he knew that we would need redemption and this whole earth history was going somewhere history is not uh, an endless cycle we we have cycles in life but but history is going somewhere and it's going to a conclusion and that conclusion is christ king of kings lord of lords reigning in a new heaven and a new earth where sin is done away with where there is no more death no more coronavirus none of these things are going to be there and Christ will rule with his people, his saints, and it's going to be an amazing thing. But in the meantime, even in this cursed creation, even, even now we can look around us and, and say, wow, God. All right, I'll post a new video soon on chapter four. I already finished reading chapter four, and I hope you continue to follow along. Good night. Have a, have a good night. God bless.